the version you will just come into the church for we need to begin just take a look and just come right into the church please take a look come into the church please we need to begin for we are very late just take a look My friend, could you just turn down from us, please? Okay, brethren, just take a look, and then as you look, you look and move. Just go into the church so that we can begin. For we are very, very late. Just take a look and just move right into the church. Just look and move, brethren. Look and move. Yeah, big man. Okay, just take a look and move right into the church. Won't you stand for us? Everyone, please stand. Lord, thou has been our dwelling place in our generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and says, Return ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday. We spend our ears as a tale that is told. The days of our years, as she scores years and ten, and if by reason of strength there be four scores years, that is the strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. So teach us to number our days, so that we may all apply our hearts unto wisdom. Let us take heed to the word of God. We'll continue with the singing of the hymn, The Lord's My Shepherd, and to the tune of the happy wanderer. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want he makes me down to lie in pastor's green he leadeth me the quiet waters lie he leads he leads he leads I know the he leads he leads he leads me in my heart 
Three. Just bow your head where you are. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to know that you are the resurrection and the life. And even though death has made it in roads, we are so happy that one of these days, death shall surely die. We are so glad to know that you have given us hope. Hope in the coming of the Lord. So we pray even at this time that you will give comfort. That you will comfort those who mourn. And lift our heart heavenward to that great day. When you shall come to take your people home. Even as we are about to begin the program, Lord, we put everything into your hands and ask that all things will be done according to your name, honor, and glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. lessons come to us from the book Romans, reading from verses 1 to 13, and I'll read in your hearing. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know he not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ be raised from the dead, dieth no more, death has no dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon he also yourselves to be dead indeed, unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that he shall obey it in the lust thereof. Thirteen and last, neither yield ye your members as instrument of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instrument of righteousness unto God. Here ends the, ends the reading of God's holy word. Since we, are pressed for, since we are pressed for time, we are going to, I'm going to read and you come as you. We now have a selection from G. Spence, who is Jean, who is a daughter. After that, we'll have the tributes, Brother V. Wade, John Woolery, Antonis Swaby. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Hmm? If when we give the best of her service, telling the world that a Savior is come. 
be not dismayed when men don't believe you. He'll understand and says, well done. Oh, when I come to the end of life's journey, weary of life, and the battle is won, carrying the star and the cross of redemption. He'll understand and says, well done, misunderstood that the Savior of sinners hung on the cross. He was God only Son. Oh, hear him call his Father in heaven. Let not my will but thine be done. Oh, when I come to the end of life's journey, weary of life, and the battle is won, carrying the star and the cross of redemption, he'll understand and say he's well done. If this life becomes, if when this life of labor is ended, and the reward of the race you have won. Take up your cross, run quickly to meet him. He'll understand and says, well done. Oh, when I come, to the end of life's journey, weary of life, and the battle is won, carrying the stop and the cross of redemption. He'll understand and says, well done. But if you try and fail in your trying and sword and scar from the work you begun take up your cross run quickly to meet him he'll understand and say well done oh when I come to the end of life's journey weary of lives and the battle is won carrying the star and the cross of redemption he long understand and see is well done he'll understand and see is well done my brothers and sisters this word saying if when we take up our cross and follow the Lord and do what he requires of us then he will say, well done, good and faithful, my servant, in whom I'm well pleased. So.
We're asking John Woolery to come at this time. Followed by Anton Swaby. And then we'll ask our counselor to say a few words. Is Counselor Everest School for this division? I dream of a city called glory so bright and so fair when I entered the gates I cried only the angels all met me to mention and oh what sight I saw but I said I want to see Jesus cause he's the one who Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Though it may be 
Indeed, a sad day, I'm sure, Mas Denso would have wanted us to have a smile and a cheering heart because that's the man he is, always finding something to make him happy. And I stand here, not just on the behalf of my family, but as a son to Mas Denzel, as my grandfather, when I visit him in Florida, would say, that is my dad. My grandmother gave me the wrong father. So, Mas Denzel is no stranger to us. He is a solid sile of the Morantown community, and he went with joy in his heart. I can tell you that much, that every time when I visit him, there would be nothing but joy. He'd always be asking, where is Mona? Where is Josh? You're not so little anymore, you know. I'm here, Maggie, beer trouble. But he was always that jovial person. And I want the family itself and the community to just remember his legacy that he has left us with and remember the happy days. Don't think on the sad times, but keep in your hearts the memories of the happy time and the legacies that he's left us. And I'm sure you can look around and see his beautiful children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren that are here, a fruit of his soil. And I just want you guys to embrace his loss and know that he's in a better place today. He is in a better place. And I'm indeed happy that the Lord has taken him and placed him where he should be. Everybody? Come on, man. Remember Mas Denso from bicycle days, my riding bicycle. When you foot at him, he's still riding bicycle with his stick. Come on, we have to keep that smile in our hearts. The tears may come, but bring back the happy memories to fade away the tears. Amen? Amen. All right. Bless the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Indeed. It is a happy day, even though we are mourning the loss of a loved one. Those of us who are here, we have a lot to be grateful for, and we have to give God the glory. Amen? Amen. Let me acknowledge Pastor and the other members of the clergy, members of the Vonsville SDA, members of the community, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I greet you this afternoon in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our soon coming King. First, I want to extend sincerest of condolences to the James family. You know, I saw Doreen outside and I could see the tears rolling down her cheek and I could just imagine, you know, the heartache and the sense of sadness and despair that you feel at this time. But I, I want to encourage you, the family, the James family, to, to lean on the promise of God. For in his words, he says, he'll never leave or forsake you. And we know that the weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. You know, Mas Denzel, is what we call him. And uh, you know, just about at the entrance of Pimentel, Mas Denzel and the family lived on that hill on the right hand side going up to Malden. And they say, how, how you know the hallmark of a man is the way he lived. And Mas Denzel has been a man who protects his family. He provides for his family. And you could say he performed for his family. And the legacy that he would have left today, and you can see it in the, in the family, and not just that, but those of us who come out this afternoon to send him home, 
we can see that he was well loved and he has made a mark in this community. And I'm sure when the history of Maroon Town is written, Mass Denzel names will be etched in that history book of Maroon Town. But the family and us go way back. Because I have taught some of the children, grandchildren in school, Doreen would have been a classmate and a schoolmate of my eldest sister. And uh, Trevor and the others, we have played games together. But one of the reasons, and I had to come today, because my own father tell me many stories about Mars Denzel because they were Domino bodies. And, you know, if Mars Denzel, I don't know how good a Domino player he, he was, but if he could play Domino, as good as he ride his bicycle, then he was a hell of a player. You know, I want to say to the family, be proud of the legacy of Mars Denzel. Yes, you can clap. But not only that he has left a lasting legacy, but in cricketing terms, we would say he bat very well. And I just want to encourage you, family members, to continue the legacy and be proud of the legacy of Mars Denzel James because he will surely not be forgotten. May his soul rest in peace and light perpetually shine upon him. I thank you. We'll now be favored with a selection from the Vaughansville SDA Church. And this will be followed by the second lesson, which will be done by the Spen sisters' granddaughter. Waiting 
Good afternoon, everyone. Our second lesson is taken from Ecclesiastic 3, 1 to 12. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the sun. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which was planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He that had made everything beautiful in his time, also he had set the world in their heart, so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Twelve and, last. Twelve and last, I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. Thanks be to God. We'll now have the remembrance, and this will be done by H. Thomas, son-in-law, and Michael James, nephew. After they have spoken, we'll have the tributes as in the um, program, R. James, granddaughter, the Stephen family, and Doreen James Cole, daughter. Good evening, everyone. Um, I told, I call him daddy. I told him I will be back when I come back. I will talk a lot of things more with him, but he passed away before I reached back. He always tell me, look on the little ones, them, take care of them, see that they don't do bad things. But true and far away, it's hard for me to really deal with that. I only know like three, four people that I really talk to a lot with good behavior. It's, um, it's grandkids, them, and some other more I see on the street. But he passed away, and I say he passed away too early. I miss him, but he gone. He's a good man to everyone I know. He talk about them, his own son and daughter. He talk about them that if they do bad, I must tell them. I must talk to them. And I said, this man is very dangerous. He's a dear man, but some people don't know him. 
they only see a side of him. When he talking, he talk with a smile. He might talk to you with a, a grunt, but he talk to me with a smile. And I use it that I should follow his footstep, talk to everyone. But I miss him, and I wish he was here. Thank you. When, when tomorrow starts without me, and, and I'm, I'm not, not there to see, see, if the sun should finally, if the sun, sun should, should rise and find, find your eyes all filled with tears for me, I wish so much you wouldn't cry the way you did today. So while thinking of the many things we didn't get to say, I know how much you love me as much as I love you. And each time that you think of me, I know you'll miss me too. But when tomorrow starts without me, please try and understand that an angel came and called my name and took me by the hand and said, my place was ready in heaven far above and that I had to leave all those that I dearly love. But as I turned and walked away, a tear fell from my eye. For all my life, I always thought I didn't want to die. I had so much to live for, so much yet left to do. It seems almost impossible that I was leaving you. I thought of all the, th the yesterday, the good and the bad. I thought of all the love we shared and all the fun we had. If I could relive yesterday, just even for a while, I'd say goodbye and kiss you, and may you see you smile. But then I finally realized that this could never be, for emptiness and memory would only take the place of me. And when tomorrow starts, and when I thought of the worldly things I might miss come tomorrow, I thought of you. And when I did, my heart was filled with sorrow. But when I walked through Evans Gate, I felt so much at home when God looked down and smiled at me from his golden throne. He said, this is eternity, all I've promised you. Today your life on earth has passed, but here life starts anew. I promise no tomorrow, but today you will, all, will always last. And since each day is the same, there is no longing for the past. You have been so faithful and trusting. Sorry about that. You have been so faithful so trusting and true. Though there were many times you did some things you know you shouldn't do. But you have been forgiven and now at last I'm free. 
So won't you take my hand and share my life with me? So when tomorrow starts without me, don't think we are far apart. For every time you think of me, I'm right there in your heart. Thank you. Good evening. I can take a heart that's broken, make it all over again. But I know a man who can, and I can take a soul that's in sick. Make it whiter than snow But I know a man who can And some call him Savior The Redeemer a man But I Jesus, for he is my dearest friend. And when you feel no one can help you, and your life is out of hand, I know a man who can. And I can't walk upon the waters or calm the raging sea. But I know a man who can. And I can cause blind eyes to open or oh, make the lame to walk again but I know a man who can some call him savior the redeemer a man, but I call him Jesus, for he's my dearest friend. And when you feel there's no one to help you, and your life is out of hand, yes, I know a man who can Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I must say condolences to the James family from the Stevens family. We grew up together like we were brothers and sisters. My father would correct Mass Denso children, and Mass Denso would correct our, my father's children. We couldn't sleep on Mass Denso see us. He would make a complaint, and then no matter what hours Papa come in, we go and get beaten. In the week we, and in go beat we, come as then so say. Come as then so not tell, no lie. No lie. Remember us girls going to Takibong and Kodjo River to carry bananas. 
we would run race because some of us want to done before some and then some banana field is bigger than some so what we would say to that dad we are going to book five o'clock in the morning and then when all of them reach the book we already gone three or four trips <laughs> that's the way we grow so we are like brothers and sister welcome to the club girls our father has gone 25 years ago Madensu just left, but welcome, we are all orphans. We have no mother and we have no father. So we are still one big, happy family. Wherever we go, we are still the same family. I could remember Uncle Tutsi on a given evening when we were living in Pimento Hill. Because we leave the main road now and we go on to Pimento Hill. And when Uncle Tutsi would be going on the road and him come up and him call my father, hear me now. Then Uncle, where would they go? We go out on the highway, Caronia so a back street, not no round here, so. <laughs> and they come out and them play them down, you know, till certain times, but if we know, say we do nothing, we have to prepare for what going to happen when Papa come. Can go away quick, and in the hobby. I remember one day we went home with Doreen and Holly for lunch. And when we get back to school, school calls, so we all decided we are going to hide because we're going to get beaten. And we hide, and when school over, we all went home nice like we were coming from school. And I remember when dad come in the night, yeah, fear. When we go back to school, yeah, me, yes, papa. We <laughs> go to school. The man he said, no, you and Olive and Dorin and Glenn are not go back to school. <laughs> we here, we no hide in our old road. And he gave me a beat, me say me, Olive and Dorin, if me late, me they go to school, and then me soon, me they go to school, because I don't take no beat. So we all grew up. There are enough memories about Mass Denzel and my father and all the old ones down the road. We have a good unity growing up. Those days, persons could grow children. Now you can't grow nobody children. You just have to pass them and go ahead and back in the days. But I think if that was happening now, we would still have a better Jamaica where parents could grow children. And we're just going to see one verse, Daisy. My heart can sing when I pause to remember a heart taken. His but a stepping stone along the tree.
for that song. And I'm telling you, because we live in this sin-cursed earth, we don't know what is awaiting us. Let us all be faithful, because where we are going is out of this world. At this time, we are going to take an offering. We ask those to come along. And we'll be singing the song when the trumpet of the Lord. And I want you to sing. Come along. Let us pray, our loving Father. We thank you for this moment. We thank you that we are alive. Although we have come on this occasion, which is a sad one, we still rejoice in you. We are about to collect an offering and we ask, O oh Lord, that you will bless the givers and that it will do what it is supposed to do. We pray for Christ's sake. I want everybody to sing now. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the save of earth shall gather over on the other shore and the roll is called up yonder and everybody sing it now. When the roll is called up yonder 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 Robin, on the bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. Good evening, church. I'm actually um, not a child of um, uncle. I'm a nephew. But I have to share my experience with um, Uncle Denso. Uncle Denso was a uh, father to me. Uh, bear with me a little bit, church. Um, I was born in England. I, my parents take me to Jamaica uh, when I was 10 years old. A lot of my friends and family don't know this, but um, when my father bring me to, 
to Jamaica and he went back to England. Uncle Denzel played that father role for me. And um, I want to say I really, as I get older, I really appreciate that father role from Uncle Denzel. However, um, I want to share a little bit of a story with Uncle, how much he cared about me and going to school and etc. Anyway, um, Uncle Denzel was a very good shoemaker. For the older folks will know that, the younger folks will not know that, but very good shoemaker. And for a lot of people who don't know, they will go to Uncle Denzel's shop and when they have their shoe need to, to repair or fix, you will sit on a bench and he will fix it while you wait and he have a conversation with you and in no minute you have that shoe on your foot and you're back to normal. That was Uncle Denzel. Like to talk, like to help you, to make you feel good. Anyway, um, when my parents leave from England to Jamaica, then from Jamaica to the United States, my mom and my dad, they know a um, place where they could get shoe material. They would send it to Uncle Denzel, like shoe bottom and you know, leather for shoes, shoelace. I'm going to school. My shoe have a little hole, bottom lift. Uncle Denzel will look at your foot. And uh, you would um, let me let me let me see you let, let me see your shoes. Of course, we I was maybe 14 years old. You know, you don't want Uncle to mess with your shoes anyway. You have you have to do what he say. However, this particular day, Uncle Denzel um, look at the shoe and he says, "No, we have to put a new shoe bottom on your on your shoe." So you have to leave it with me. So normally I can't sit there to get that done. Anyway, um, that shoe was ready for Monday for school. And church, I want to share this with you. Listen to this one. The shoe bottom have this kind of, I would say, saw blade kind of texture on it. So when you walk into like water or a little mud area, you would give that little, that little, saw blade or shark teeth look to the shoes. So went to shoes, went to school, and this Monday, looking good with my shoe, feeling good. My, my friends and my classmate, they, they, you know, they call me Michael. They said, oh, Michael have on a, a shark teeth shoes. However, never feel happy about that. But back in that time, if you don't like it, you can't say nothing because your name would be shark teeth shoes. However, they never feel good about it. So come from school, you have to pass by uncle and you can't say anything. You have to go by him shop and you have to say Uncle Denso, you know, good evening because that's how I grew up. You have to say good evening and, you know, he would ask you, how was school? Face looking a little bit down, blush. And he said, what happened to you? You don't look like you're happy. I said, uncle, um... My, my, my friends look at my shoes and they call it shark teeth shoes. And he said, who, who call you, 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 you your shark teeth shoes? And you know, of course you can't call no neighbor. You say, my friends, he said, let me tell you something. Tell them, say, anybody who call you for shark teeth shoes, they have to come talk to me because you don't have on no shark teeth shoes. You have on a good pair of shoes. So of course, now when I go back to school, I had a little story to that. I tell my friends that my uncle says, my uncle says, don't call me shoes, no shark teeth shoes. And him going to pull out all our teeth out of the mouth and know what shark teeth shoes is. <laughs> because me want to feel big. Now my friends them feel bad about that now and said, oh, can't call him no shark teeth shoes because me don't want to lose my teeth them. <laughs> so however, uncle keep up with me on that and said, what them say when you tell them? Mr. say, uncle, they don't call me no shark teeth shoes no more. <laughs> he say, all right. And if they call you again, you make them know what they're going to get. So this is how this story went with this. And you always keep up with me. You can't come from school and you don't say good evening. And one more thing I like about my uncle. He used to smoke as a younger man back days. I, I was maybe 14, 15, I could remember. And he always sent me to local store, buy him cigarette, buy him beer, and whenever he sent me to the store, I cannot, I cannot forget this, 
He asked me the question, how much you have in your hand? And I said, uncle, me have whatever it is. I can't remember a long time. He said, go and go buy your sweetie. I cannot forget that. So this is Uncle Denso to me, and I still say it's my father because my father spent most of his time back in the foreign country. Uncle Denso was right here, grew up with uh, some of my cousins as sister. Uh, they are here now, can you know, identify that. So Uncle Denso, you're still a father to me, love you, and I hope your soul rests in peace. Love you as a father, Uncle, and rest in peace. Thank you. I have been asked to speak on behalf of the church, family, the pastor, the community, as well as I am speaking for myself. Uncle Denzel, until the time of his death, has been a member of the Vance Field Seventh-day Adventist Church in regular standing. When he became ill, he always looked forward for us as family of the church to serve him communion. And we know that Elder Denzel loved to talk. So when we are serving communion, we ensure that Elder Denzel will be the last home to visit. For when we reach there, we cannot go anywhere else. For he would have taken up all our time. He loved to sit and he reasoned. He loved the word of God. He loved the Bible. And he often said, Pastor, I want you to explain this for me. And I want you to know that when it was explained, he praised the Lord. One thing that I knew about him he knew everyone in the community. Because when I was able to say to him concerning somebody who was living in Cold Spring, he said, I know that individual. I know everyone living in the community. He knows everyone. And of course, he has been a very good citizen of the community. I don't hear of him having any grievances with anyone. He was indeed an upright person and he loves his children. He even oftentimes sit with me and said, Pastor, I really want my children to be saved. And I'm praying for them. Help me to pray for them. And we will pray and we will sing for him. And I tell you, beloved, he often look forward to our visit. And we never leave him out. But most of all, brethren, I am happy to say that he died in the Lord. For the Bible said, blessed are the dead, which die in the Lord. They said the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their work do follow him. I believe that other than he lived for the Lord and he died in the hope of the great resurrection morning. For I surely believe that the massy old grave where the pilgrims sleep shall be open as wide as before and the millions that sleep in the mighty deep shall live on this earth 
once more. It is for this, therefore, brethren, that I am not troubled. For soon and very soon, the trumpet will be blown, and we will see Jesus comes. And when he comes, those who die will be risen to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore, I want you to understand that in order for you to be in that number, you must accept Jesus. For only when you have Jesus will you have this hope that burns within our hearts, hope in the coming of the Lord. Soon and very soon, Jesus will come. He will take us home to be with him. But you must be prepared. So I appear to you with the song. Where will you be when the first trumpet sound? Where will you be when it sounds so loud? It got to sound so loud that it wake up the dead. Where will you be when it sound? It is my hope. That when the trumpet blown and the dead will be risen, all of us here today will be united to meet Jesus in the air. Is my prayer for you all in Jesus' name. At this time, we are going to hear a little more about Mass Denzel. We thought his name was Denzel, only to discover that he is Densley. So eulogy for the late Densley Walter James, also called Dada. Uncle, Denzel, Mas Denzel, Cos, and I call him Maden. November 12, 1919, February 12, 2022. Job 4, verse 1 says, Man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. And though Mars Denzel had a span of almost 103 years, it is considered a few days compared to Methuselah, who lived 969 years. The great actor Forrest Jump, in one of his, movie, sorry, one of his movies, said that his mother always say, life is like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're going to get. In life, we all get some things that are unwanted, undesirable, uninvited, and painful. One such thing is death, which we all wish was not a reality that we have to face. However, no matter who we are, where we are from, our status in life, or where we are at, death will always happen around us and to us. Here is a story that led to one of these undesirable things. Almost 103 years ago, on Wednesday, November 12, 1990, in the quiet district of Vaughansville, the shrill of a baby was heard announcing its arrival into the world. The midwife then exclaimed, it's a boy. And so began the life's journey of this baby boy. He was born to Arthur James, labor of Malden, and Rosina James, formerly Anderson, of Vaughansville, both in the parish of St. James. His formal education was obtained at Vaughansville Elementary School, then situated on St. Luke's Anglican Church premises. 
Unfortunately, though densely Arthur James, as he was named, did not finish his education, as he had to work with his mother on the farm to help take care of his siblings, Willis, Melva, and Mildred. As time progresses, he employed himself in shoemaking, but for some reason or the other, he migrated to Vare in Clarendon, where he worked. There he met Lena Paisley. The union produced three children, Verol, now deceased, Jean, and Junior. Then they moved to St. Anne's, and that's Lena's parish, where two more children were born, namely Olive and Dennis. St. James seemed to be beckoning him, so home he came. And being a biological fertile man, he and Lena produced Trevor and Doreen. They were not yet finished. On May 4, 1963, they got married, and Jacqueline, also deceased, Dion and Charmaine were born. He continued to farm and do shoemaking to take care of his large family. In the course of time, Mas Denzel, as he was known, got baptized in the Malden Baptist Church, where he held a position of a deacon. Mas Denzel was a jovial person. He had some bona fide friends, we call it bona fide friends, namely Poppy, that's my Sonny James, Edmund Shaw, Bantu, Mas Tony Morris, and others. And you heard that band. He visited and always had some jokes when they parted. Mas Denso was a good storyteller. Fate, however, fate had some sickness laid up for him. Finally, he came down with an ulcerated stomach, which nearly took his life. During this period, visitation from his church was nil, and in his usual jovial manner, he said that the only visit he got was that of his wife, who was also a member. Apart from that, he was visited by the Seventh-day Adventists, and in gratitude, he was baptized into this fellowship on the 11th of August, 1995, where he remained until death. He was supported of his church, for even on his sick bed, he would contribute where monetary endeavors were concerned. Mas Denzel was very attentive to his mother, Miss Rosie, when she was ailing, he took turns with his brother to care for her every weekend until he took on the care full time. After his ordeal with Hurricane Gilbert, 1988, and with the threat of Ivan coming in 2004, he moved to Vaughansfield. Regrettably, his wife Lena deceased him in 2001. Then came arthritis, which compromised his mobility. But that did not deter him from riding to Germantown and back to Von Spiel. You would see him at times pushing his bicycle up the hill to visit his friend Sonny James, as he would announce his arrival. And with his knee going in different directions, when he became immobile and bedridden, he was cared for by his children, grandchildren, in-laws, and church members, respectively. Anyhow, before he reached that stage of his life, he cared for four of his grandchildren, two for Doreen and two for Charmaine, and they are very grateful to him for that. I am told that he was a favorite of his nieces and nephews. Here's an interesting part of his story. I don't know if you would call it a premonition or not. When Kimo, his grandson, died in November of last year, 2021, he said to his daughter, Jean, when one do buy me headstone, that me can feel it before me go. Jean said, me no know when you go dead, figure by headstone. Anyhow, 
May I go talk to everybody else about it? His reply was, all right, me want to feel it before me dead. Reason he wanted to feel it was that his sight had gone. About 10.30 Friday morning, February 11, 2022, he was taken to the hospital because he was not feeling well after Matthew made a call to Olive. Although he was sick in his usual jovial and humorous manner, he asked where he was and why. His reply to the nurse was, how comes I'm in the hospital and still feeling pain? Olive said that around 5.30 that same Friday evening, she was inspired to call him and they had a conscious conversation. She encouraged him to make things right with God. So on that great get up morning, when his name is called, he will answer to his name. He replied by saying, mm -hmm, I'm going to do that right now. On Saturday morning, Junior, or Lazarus as we know him, was called to the hospital. Mas Denzel expired on Saturday, February 12, 2022 at about 10.30 a.m. A sad moment indeed, but he has lived a full life. Dada, Mas Denzel, Uncle Denzel, cause, has left an army behind him to grieve his loss on this side. Six sons, six daughters. Alfonso, Arthur, same junior, Lazarus, Trevor, Dennis, Andrew, and Dion. Daughters, Heroni, Monica, Jean, Olive, Doreen, and Charmaine. 64 grandchildren. 107 great-grandchildren. 25 great-great-grand. One sister, Melva. One brother-in-law, Rubin. Sons-in-law, daughters-in-law, nephews, nieces, cousins, friends, church family, and community members. His presence is no longer with us. His voice is silent. The seat at the table, his plate, and his bed are empty. The lot of humanity has fallen upon him. He came from earth. He is going to return to the earth to become dust and ashes, but he will not be forgotten. If he had, if he had re reconciled, and he was faithful to his God, angels will mark his grave, and he will be called in the first resurrection. Mourn his loss, family members and everybody, but hope in the Lord. Sleep on Dada until the great getting up morning. In a time of despair, when it seems like all hope is gone, we ask ourselves a question, is there any words from the Lord? We even ask ourselves a question, does Jesus cares? Oh yes, we know he cares, for his heart is Touch with my griefs when the days are weary and the long night dreary. I know my Savior's cares. It is for this, therefore, that God has chosen Pastor Chevarid, Pastor of the Vansfield Circuit of Churches and lay a message on his heart to relate to us his love so that we can understand that all is not lost 
as he speak to us today through his man servant, Pastor Shavarid, I urge that you will hear his voice coming through his man servant, who will tell us more about what God has in mind for us. But before he comes to deliver the message to which the Lord has given him, we are going to be blessed with a song of meditation given to us by the choir of the Vansfield Seventh-day Adventist Church. Then the next voice that you will hear is that of God's servant, Pastor Sheva Reed, speaking on behalf of his God. No 
Amen. Heaven's bright shore. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to that day when there will be no more funeral services. I'm looking forward to that day when death too will die. I'm looking forward to that day. I want to express sincere condolences to the bereaved family. I want you to note that it doesn't matter how long you live. When you die, you leave a void in your loved one's heart. It doesn't matter what people want to say. Everyone who dies has a loved one. Amen? But I want you to know that while you mourn the loss of your loved one, I know somebody who understands the inner recesses of your heart. He knows how your hearts are throbbing. He knows the depth of your sorrows. And he is the comforter. His name is Jesus. He will comfort you. He will speak to you during this your period of bereavement. Today, I want to talk to you about that day, your appointment. And my question is, are you ready for your appointment? The Bible tells us that it is appointed unto man. And I would love if I don't have the competition that we cease the talking with each other and listen to the word of God at this moment. I see some people in the back there chatting. We're asking if you could cease the talking so we can have one meeting at this time. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die. So I may hasten to all of us to say that we will die. Amen? We will die. It's not that we may die. We will die. It is appointed unto us once to die. And after death comes the judgment. I don't know about you, but Job says a man that is born of a woman is of a few days and is full of trouble. So I am going to have a troublesome life and then I die. Amen? There is no sweet sailing in this life. I'm going to have my troubles, I'm going to have my difficulties. I'm going to have all sorts of aches and pains and then I die. And after death, they say comes the judgment. It doesn't matter who you are, who your parents are. It doesn't matter if you are rich or you are poor. It doesn't matter. It is appointed unto man once to die. And all of us are born of women. So since we are born of women, we are of a few days and we are full of trouble. Trouble from all angles. But I'm not worried. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. And the reason I'm not worried, he says, after death comes the judgment. Amen? Amen? So after my troubles are over, then comes the judgment. And God will judge every one of us. And I am excited to tell you that I'm looking forward to the judgment. Because the judgment will be on my side if I stay on Christ's side. So before we open the word today, I'm going to invite you to bow your heads with me as I invite God's presence. Heavenly Father, I stand once more as an instrument to be used by you. Hide me now behind the cross 
So I will not be seen but your words coming from your throne. And let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. I want you to know it, my brothers and sisters. Troubles are coming from all angles. Disappointments are coming from all angles. When we hear the earth passing, we know that a loved one has been taken. When we look at the hospital and we see the numbers of beds there and the hospitals are filled to capacity, we know that people are falling sick. Am I right? When you look at the prisons and the prisons are bursting at their seams, you know that something is wrong. When you look at people, oh, they are serious. There is no laughter on their faces. And as you approach them and to talk to them, they want to curse you. You know something is wrong. Troubles from all angles. But I stop by here to let you know that these troubles are only for a time. Because I hear Jesus says to those of us who are wrapped up and tied up with him, let not your hearts be troubled. Don't worry. But Molly would say, don't worry about a thing. For every little thing is going to be all right. But Jesus is saying, let not your hearts be troubled. So the James family, let not your hearts be troubled. In this life of death, all you need to do is wrap yourself in the arms of Jesus. And when you are wrapped up and tied up with Jesus, you have nothing to fear. You are not even fearful of death. Let not your hearts be troubled. He believe in God. You who believe in God believe also in me. In my father's house there are many mansions. There are no small houses. Hello. There are no small houses in God's house. There are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again. And I want you to know that he left. He left and he's coming again. He's coming with a shout of the archangel, am I right? With the trump of God, he is coming again. I want you to know that he is coming again. He's coming with a shout and the skies will be open and he shall descend. And the good thing about his coming is that the dead in Christ I said that the dead in Christ shall rise first and I said thank you Jesus can I settle something right here with you today everyone that dies now in Christ is not gone on before and no heaven I said, everyone who died in Christ now has not gone on before. The Bible says that dead in Christ, every single one of them, from Adam to now, all who die in Christ shall hear the trumpet of God. Amen. I don't know about you. But I'm looking forward to that day. And I told my family members, you don't have to bury me properly. Throw me in our hole. Because it doesn't matter where you bury me. It doesn't matter how you bury me. If I die in Christ, 
I don't need to worry because if I want to hold you throw me in, the whole will give up me. And if you bury me properly, the grave will be open and I shall ascend. To meet the Lord. To meet the Lord in the air. I'm looking forward to that day when the sky will roll back as a scroll. I'm looking forward to that day when I shall look in the eastern sky and I shall see a, a symbol like the palm of a man's hand. And as it draw closer, past the stone and closer, he, I will recognize that it is the Son of Man seated on his throne with the host of the angel and, and, and Gabriel will be with him. And as he draw closer to earth, he's going to say, Gabriel, blow the trumpet. And when Gabriel shall blow the trumpet, the dead in Christ. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The Bible says, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we're going to read verse 51 and 52. Sorry, 1 Corinthians 16. It's 15. I don't know what this, why this is not scrolling. Oh, I am the wrong one, you see? First Corinthians chapter 15. And 51 and 52. Hear what the Bible says. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. That means we shall not all die. But we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed so i want you to know that even though worms may eat up my flesh today even though i may rot in my grave i don't worry because guess what that last trumpet shall sound and that dead shall be raised incorruptible so i will not what I will not rot anymore. We shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on what? Incorruption. And this mortal means this body that can die must put on immortality. I heard John the Revelator says, at that time God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more sorrows. There shall be no more crying. There shall be no more heartache and there will be no more funeral service because death too would have died. I'm looking forward to that day. I'm not worried about brother James because he knew his God. I'm not worried about brother James if he was faithful to the end. He needs not worry because he would have sealed is commitment with our Lord and Savior. I am worried for those of us who are still alive who have not seen the face of God. I am worried for those who are standing in the counsel of the ungodly. I am worried for those who are sitting in the seat of the scornful. 
I'm worried for those who are walking. Who are, who are walking in the, in the counsel of the ungodly. And they are, they, 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 they are standing in the ways of sinners. I am worried for those who feel that they are too young to serve the Lord. Hence I ask, are you ready for your appointment? This is no respecter of persons. Whether you're young or you're old. Whether you look good or you hard to look on. Whether you have it endowed or you don't. I want you to know that you must not be worried about that because guess what? God is not calling all of those into consideration. What God needs is a commitment from every one of us for us to lock our hands in his hands so that when death comes knocking at your door, you have nothing to fear. Are you ready for your appointment? But I want you to note, ready or not, ready or not, when your appointment comes, it comes. Ready or not, when your appointment comes, it comes. Hence I would say to people who ask me, why do you preach do you get money for preaching? I said, no, I don't preach for money. I preach because I know when I serve the God who created the heavens and the earth, I know I am secured. I know I am settled. I know I am sealed. I know I am ready. And I will only, if death should come, I will only sleep for a moment because the day is coming. When we shall say, Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? A day is coming, and I want everyone in the hearing of my voice. This good old story about the second coming of Jesus Christ and the dead in Christ shall be caught up to meet him is not any fairy tale. It is a true story. It's real. How do I know it is real? Because Jesus Christ came to first century Palestine. He walked the planet for 32 and a half years. He died and was resurrected after three days. His grave is empty. And because of his resurrection, we know that he is the resurrection and the life. Though you may die, yet shall you live again. I know that he is real because, guess what? There is an empty tomb. I sing because there is an open grave. I sing because he has power to save. I sing because his name and his love is real to me. I asked the question in closing. Are you ready? Are you ready for your appointment? Are you ready for your appointment? Your appointment is coming. My appointment is coming. This may be my last funeral service. I don't know. This may be my last funeral service. 
But I am clasping my hand in the hand of Jesus. And if this is my last funeral service, I will be ready for my appointment. And there's coming a day when not even death or the grave can hold my body down. Because when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, I will be caught up to meet him in the air and so shall it be. Amen and amen. amen. I'm going to read the acknowledgement at this time and then I will ask pastor to come back and pray for the family. The family of the late Densley Walter James wishes to express our sincere gratitude and appreciation to the friends and well wishes for the expression of love and powerful support shown during this time of bereavement. God bless you all. I invite the congregation at this time to stand and the members of the bereaved family to remain seated. So the family members remain seated while the congregation, friends and well-wishers, we're inviting you to stand at this moment. Our heads are bowed, our eyes closed. Great God, and our Heavenly Father, you who inhabit eternity, you God who spoke and it was done, who commanded and it stood fast, we approach you. We approach you, God, because of the love you have for humanity. That when we sin, you were not hesitant to send us your son, Jesus Christ, who bled, who died on that old rugged cross. So today, I can stand there with the hope of eternal life. Father, I know that your love is far encompassing. We cannot even understand the nature of your love. But we want to own you right now and ask you to extend your love even the more to the members of the bereaved family. They are hurting because they have lost a loved one. They have lost a father. They have lost a grandfather, a great-grandfather. Father, we know it's a difficult one. But you, O oh God, who oh speak peace to the troubled waters, I know you can speak peace to the members of the bereaved family. I ask you to hold them with that cord of love that cannot be broken. I ask your God to bind them closer together that they will not be separated as a result of the death of their father, grandfather, great-grandfather, but that they will clo be closer knitted. I ask you, O oh great God of the universe, that you will talk to them individually and collectively that those who have accepted you as personal savior, that you will continue to lead them in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. But those who have not yet surrendered to you, God, I ask you to speak to their consciences now. Yes, Lord, speak to their hearts now that they will do so before it is eternally too late that they will do so before their appointment comes, that when their appointment should come, 
they can accept death with joy, knowing that death is only a sleep. But in a moment, in a, in a little while, the E that shall come will come. And when you shall burst the eastern sky, they will be numbered among those who will hear when the trumpet sound and will come forth. Father, I pray, oh God, that you will continue to be with the family members. But not only the family members, but friends and well-wishers who have not yet surrendered to you, oh God, I ask you to speak to their consciences also because they too have an appointment with death. I ask you, oh God, for those of us who are walking with you, continue to lead us, continue to guide us, Continue to give us the strength that we need so we will not look to the right or to the left, but we will look to you whom to serve is life eternal. Continue, O oh God, to be with us, we pray. In Jesus' holy and most matchless name. Amen and amen. We'll now have the recessional hymn after which we'll move to the burial ground. Face to face with Christ my Savior. Please stand. <clears throat> face to face with Christ my Savior. Face to face what will it be when with rapture I behold him Jesus Christ, who died for me. Face to face shall I behold him? Face 